in the last session we have seen about constant values and how to print those values in the vf page or how to print those values using the system dot debug log now today we start with the variables so what is the use of this variable in the last session when you took the value i have taken some constant value called 10 suppose in due course of time when you are running the program if the value is getting changed to 20 again if it is getting changed to 30 what does it mean the value what we are using is keep changing during the run time of the program when our we are running the program the value is getting changed the value is getting changed then then we need to store this value within a location we need to give a name to this value so that we identify what value is stored in this and we can refer to it later on so let me come back to the point as i told in the last time when you taken a constant value it is a fixed now when you are saying a variable we have some memory location in this memory somewhere we are storing the data let us say in this memory location i am storing the data let us say in this location my data is stored let it be 1000 i have some other data let us say name name satish if you want to refer to this data if you want to refer to this data right now i have a value called satish i have a value called 1000 later on if i want to modify this value of 1000 to 10000 how would you recognize this location i don't know where this location is so we are giving some name to this location we are giving name to the location where we are storing the data we are giving name to the location where you are storing the data so the name what we have given name what we have given to the temporary memory location location where we can store the data the name we have given to the temporary memory location where we have stored the data that we call as very so to this location i am giving a name called salary so it's a name given to this location where i am storing the data so to refer to this location i am using the name called salary to refer to this location i am using a name called let us say employee name let me put in the words we are starting with variable so it is a name given to the temporary memory location where we can store the data and perform manipulation 
whenever we need. When you are giving a name to the memory location, we have some unanswered questions here. You have given a name to a memory location. What is the size of the memory? What is the size of the memory? What type of data is stored in the memory? What is the range of the memory? What is the range of the data that can be stored? So the definition of the variable says it is a name given to a temporary memory location where we can store the data and perform the manipulations whenever we need. But when you are looking at this definition, definition is not answering the questions like how much amount of memory is given, what type of data is given, what is the range of the data we are able to store? What is the range of the data we are able to store? So, this to answer to these questions, to answer to these questions, we have a concept called data type. What is this data type? Data type will tell you, will tell us about how much. How much amount of memory is given to a variable what type of data can be stored in a variable what is the range of the data that is stored in the that is stored in the variable. These three definitions are given for the variable using the data type. So when you are going for the data type, data types are classified under the following. Primitive data types Second, SO objects. Third, collections like list, set, map. Then, Salesforce defined objects, defined Apex class objects. Then user defined Apex class objects and enums. In the Salesforce, we have the data types like primitive data type, second SO object, third collections, four. Salesforce defined Apex class objects, fifth user defined Apex class objects, sixth enum. Let us start with the primitive data types. So what are these primitive data types? These are defined by the Salesforce. Store the data. Right. In that, first we are starting with the first data type, let us say integer. Now, integer. So, when you want to store any numerical values, so let me give you, we have a values in the form of 10.
we have the numerical values in this part. Now, when you look at this, the last two fall under currency. We are trying to store currency. This value is numerical value without decimals. Values without decimal. The other one what we have. Numerical value with decimal. Decimal point. So, when I say integer, whenever you want to store numerical value without decimal point, then we use integer data type. Whenever we want to store numerical values, whenever we want to store numerical values without integer, okay, without a decimal point, we call as integer variables. When I say integer, if we define any variable as integer, we can store numerical values without decimal point. Then, so if you are using this, it is a 32 bit number. Integer value is a 32 bit number. So when I say integer value is a 32 bit number, let me give you. Basically, when you are storing the data, I have memory location like this where my data is stored in the form of bits. Bit is either 0 or 1. Right. So, I have 4 bits. The maximum value, whenever whenever you are trying to store numerical values, last bit of this is always used for representing the sign. So, when you have 4 bits, only 3 bits are used for representing your data. That means, maximum value, what I can store here is 1, 1, 1. As the bit stores 0 or 1, the maximum value what I can store is 1, 1, 1, which is nothing but 2 to the power of 0, 1 plus 2 plus 4. 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. We are getting 7. Which can also be represented in the form of, which can also be represented in the form of 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. So, whenever somebody asks you, what is the range of the data which we can store in the memory location? If it is 4 bits what we have, if it is 4 bits what we have, if it is 4 bits what we have, then it is 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. As 1 of the bit is used for sign of the number to indicate positive or negative. So I told integer is a 32 bit number. When I told integer is a 32 bit number, which means last bit is used for representing positive or negative, that is plus or minus. So, how many bits are left out? There are 31 bits which are left out. So, what is the maximum data what we can store in this? So, maximum data is 2 to the power of 
31 minus 1. So if somebody asks me the range, I specify minus 2 to the power of 23, 2 to the power of 31. This is the range of the data what we can store. So as I told you, integer is a 32 bit number. So maximum value what we can store is 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. In case you want to store larger value than this. If you want to store larger value than 2 to the power of 31 minus 1, then we will go with the data type called long. When I say data type called long, it will store it will store numerical value without decimal point. Numerical value without decimal point. The range of this is 64 bit value. It is a 64 bit value. As a 64 bit value number, as it is a 64 bit number, what happened in this case? As it is a 64 bit number, 1 bit is used for the sign, remaining 63 bits are used for data, which means it can store 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. So whenever you want to store larger range of values, whenever we want to store larger range of values, then we go with the data type called long. So where I can define example integer age. I want to represent as right. I can give long amount. It's a long A. So this is how I created. Now when you created this integer values, let me print them in using debug log. If you have created any integer values, how do you use these values in the programming? So I think let me use any batch. I think Let me go to the developer console. How do you make it? Debug log. Open execute anonymous. We are trying to execute it. So I am giving it. Integer a is equal to 30. A equal to 40. Debug. String plus anything will give you string. So I am giving it A value plus A. Whenever I say A, the value of A is 40. The value of A is 40. So we are trying to print the value of A. So I am giving it System dot debug. So we are told in the last session, string plus anything is a string. So this is a string plus a. So what is this a? A is holding the value of 40. What is this age? Age is holding the value of 30. Age is a variable which is used to store the data of numerical value. Now let me execute it.
go to the debug log we are able to see a value 40 a is 30 right so this is how we are using the integer values similarly i can go with the long long let us say b equal to u system dot debug So let me run this. We are just printing the value. Right? This is how we are declaring a integer values and a decimal value. Okay, integer values and long values, and we are storing the data. This is how I have declared. Then let us take the next. I want to take the next data type here. The next data type is I want to store decimal values. Now we have stored integer values without a decimal point. Just give me one second. So this one question. So this. Right. Okay. So we are okay. Now. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I just wanted to know one thing that uh, what happens when there would be no plus uh, before A or H. Now, so when you want to add groupings, we have to use a concatenate operator. Otherwise, how would they would be? They know that both has to be added here. If I don't give any B at the start of this thing, it is the end of this thing. Right? Oh, that's the end of this thing. Now, what is B telling uh -huh. What is B is coming? You will take it to add both of them. Your index is to take value and add with a long value. You are trying to join two values. Okay, okay. Then we are going with the next one. So our next format is we are trying to understand decimals we have data type called decimal and we have a data type called double both these data types are used for storing the values with a decimal point when you want to store the values with the decimal points we are going with data types called decimal or double when you are going with data type when you are going with data type decimal or double it is going to store the values which contains the decimal point now what is the difference that you find between decimal and double decimal is again 32 bit number double is 64 bit number so when you want to store larger range of values, we go with the decimal. Here, one point that we have to notice, every currency value should be, every currency value should be represented in 
this one. Every currency value should be represented in decimals. So what is this? We are going with the next two formats here. Decimal. This data type used when we want to store numerical value with a decimal point. It's a 32 bit number. We have next a double this is also used to store larger range of numerical value numerical value with decimal point it is a 64 bit number it is a 64 bit number now note every currency value value should be a decimal every currency value should be a decimal so let us go with this debug format here now i have a requirement where i want to store my intention is i want to store salary of the employee I want to store age of the employee, how many years of experience he has got. These are the three data I want to store. I want to store salary of an employee, age of an employee, experience of an employee. So what is salary? Salary is currency. So always the currency should be represented in this way. Now we have age. Your age you want to take 20 30 like this or you want to take 23.4 54.5 in case if you want to store something like this you will take it as decimal no i want to simply take 20 30 without decimal point i will take integer experience 3.2 years 4.7 years like this we are giving so if you are representing the experience as 3.2 4.27 like this 3.2 4.7 like this you will go with the decimal now i want to represent like 3 years 4 years 7 years i will go with integer so based on your business requirement in which format you are storing the data based on your business requirement in which format you are storing the data based on that we have to define data type so in this context i am defining decimal salary i am setting the value here now i am giving a integer age i am giving here decimal experience so when you want to print the values here system dot debug salary
system dot debug experience I have created salary, age, experience. Let me execute. So we are getting here salary 10,000, age 30, experience 4.5. This is how you are representing your data. So when you are creating your data, understand what format of data you want to store based on that represent your data then we have next format here I want to represent date I want to represent date we have the next format here So when you want to store particular day, when you want to store a particular day, let us say I want to represent, I want to represent 10th October 2015. When you want to create a particular day, we use date. date. This is to store a particular date. Let us say date of birth date of joining transaction date when you want to store particular day we will go with the date date a full date so how do you create let us see if i want to take date td I can use system dot today. It will give you today's date. So if I say date, date of birth equal to date new instance of you have to represent in the form of year, month. I am trying to create my data part. How do you create? Date dot new instance of year, month, day. New instance of year, month, day. So let me show you here. Not today. Today's date is 4. Date, date of birth equal to date dot new instance of let us say I want to give 25. I want to give here. I have given some date. When you want to print, let us see in which format it is going to print. System dot debug. Transaction date. Transaction date. We are going to take some transaction date. We are printing here. Similarly, I am printing here system dot debug date of birth. This is how we created. So when you are printing the date values, how they are printed? When you are entering the date, you are entering year, month, day.
transaction. There is a predefined word used for some other operation. It is a key word. So we are trying to know how the date values are printed in the sales force. So we are going to get here. Year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Whenever you are printing the date, it is also printing year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Hours, minutes, seconds. Right. So let me give you date. So instance of a date. Instance of a date. So let me take this. Similarly, we also have We also have date and time. We also have the date and time. So where you are going to store date along with the time. When you want to store date along with the time, let me give you. System dot now. When I say system dot now, current date and time is taken. Date time applied date. I am giving a date time dot new instance of new instance of we want to take let us say here okay Fine, no issue. So I am taking here 2015, 10th, 6th of the month at 10 30. So I have given the date and time in the form of year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. So let me print this value, you will understand. Keep up. Let me execute it. Let me see the output of this. So how the date and times are created here. So they have given you apply a date. They have given you year, month, day, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Now, if you observe here, we are not getting the current time here. We are not getting the current time. Why we are not getting the current time here? The reason for this is, my system time zone, whatever that is there, that is considered. So, let me go back to this. Let me go to my organization and see what is the time zone that is running on my organization. Go to my organization. First, let me check out the user time zone. User who is running is Satish. What is the time zone of the user? It says running in the time zone of GMT. That is how whenever I say system dot now, it is a time zone of the user who is logged in. 
it is a time zone of the user who has logged in. So let me modify this data. Time zone of the user is here. Look at the time zone of the company at the same time. So we can find out which is running first. Please look at the point. Your organization time zone is already in AST. As the user time zone is not in AST, the user time zone is given to you. So now let me run it again. So look at the time zone now. It's the old one. Five, ten. What is the time zone running? I think it's saved or not. Let me check out again. Okay, fine. Let's not uh, spend much on it. So when you're good, going with this, it's uh, the time zone what we're taking. Year, month, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Date and time. Day along with time. Right. Now, next one what we have? We have the seventh one as time. So when you say time, this is basically used to store particular time. So let me give you. When you want to store a particular time, time dot new instance of you can check out here hours 10 minutes 30 seconds so let me give you here system dot work time When you are given this, let us go back and check out. So you got here hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, zone. This is how the data is represented. So time. This is to store instance of a particular time. this code so now let me complete the time zones also so whenever you want to create a time how the time is created time is created in the form of time hours minutes seconds milliseconds this is how we represent it similarly when you want to represent the day time
So we are going to get the form of this is the format in which date and time is true. Right. So last data type for this session. Last two data types are of string and boolean. So whenever we want to store alpha numeric data, we use Let me give you string name string branch this is how I am giving it. So how do you display just not debug This is how we represented the data. String is for representing alpha numeric data. String is for representing alpha numeric data. So last data type what we have is boolean. Last data type what we have is boolean. So when you say boolean, it is going to store true or false. Boolean. When you say boolean, this will represent boolean value true or false. or false values. I am going to give I take a flag equal to 2 system dot debug flag. So these are the primary things what we have. Along with these two advanced formats are also available. One is Blob. When you say blob, this is a collection of binary data. Data this is a collection of binary data under one object. Basically, this is used to transfer when you are transferring PDF files. When you want to store PDF files, images audios will use the blob format next one is object this can store any type of data that are supported by fix this can store any type of data that are supported by apex data types. So this is the preliminary data types or primary data types what we have in the sales force. Let me quickly take some examples of this. So if you are going with this, I have the representation. Now I want to store some data related to these users. So look at this format. 
I'm trying to represent the data related to this particular person. Let us say I have some student. The student has I have some student. The student has name. Now we have age of the student, qualification of the student, date of birth of the student. I want to know, let us say, student name, age, qualification, date of birth, fees, city. I want to know city of the student. These are the sum of the properties what the student has got. Now, I want to store this data of a student. I want to store the following data of a student. So first let us start with student name. Student name is going to be what? Suppose it's an alphanumeric. So we are going to have student name. Okay. Now age. Age is going to be a numerical value. Integer age. 30 I give. Qualification. Qualification is going to be BTEC or index. So it is a string. Then date of birth. Date of birth is going to be a date. I can simply say now system dot today. Fees. Fees is going to be currency. Currency value is decimal. Then we have a city. City is going to be again. So it depends upon category of the data we are going to store. We have to define the corresponding data type. Depends upon the type of data we want to store. We have to define the corresponding data type. As I am storing the numerical value, I am giving integer. As I am storing the alphabets, I have given string. As I am storing the currency value, I have given this. Right. This is how you are going to define variable with the data types. Any query on that?